Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm Heather. And we're Woolly Elephant. This is um, episode 48. Eight. I've even just logged. <laughs> <laughs> and it's now Saturday morning. Um, the 18th. 18th. Of October. No, it's the 19th. It's the 19th, apparently. Yeah, I have to write the date every day. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the 19th of October, about 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, so we're, you know, we've had to change the day again, haven't we? Yeah, husband's taken an extra shift on when we were going to go do it, where he was going to look after the kids, but now he's working. So here we are on Saturday. <laughs> so, so it's just when we can fit it in now. It's finding it's getting harder and harder, isn't it? Yeah. To try and fit this in, so they won't be frequent as many, but we will still keep doing it. You might just get us, um, say like maybe once every eight weeks. Maybe six, mm. and we'll have a lot more to show. Yeah, I've come. I've basically brought my house. Yeah, and I've done quite <laughs> a lot as I'm sewing as well. Plus, Nikki's got a new venture, so um, there'll be a lot more to talk about in the future. Mm, it's gonna be good. So, um, do a general waffle at the end, eh? Yeah, we'll do waffle. At the end. We've got finished objects, several of both of us. Mm. Mine's knitting and sewing. Yours is knitting. Mine's crocheting, sorry. So there will be... Your hat's not knitted. No, nope, we're crocheting. So there will be more uh, sewing in our videos in the future because we've both been doing it more, haven't we? <laughs> so, finished objects. Have you got any? Oh. Oh. You can find us. <laughs> we're, we're so professional. <laughs> we're on Instagram, Woolly Elephant Mum and Woolly Elephant Daughter. Uh, we're on Ravelry, but we don't really... Don't really go we on. don't really use it, uh, but it's there. We do check it every now and then, so if you ever want to ask us anything, you can ask us through there, but preferably, you better, if you want to ask us a question, either comment down below when you're hitting like and subscribe. Yes, that too. Don't forget that. But you can also, you, you'd be better messaging us through our shop on Etsy, because there's a direct message thing through there, and we will see and answer those, whereas if you... And we will on Instagram generally as well. Yeah. Um, you can message us through there, but it's I don't look at Ravel very often unless I want to buy something. You yeah, looking for a pattern. Castilia, my voice. I've obviously I've had a, a three week long cold, and Nikki's starting with a horrific sore throat and a cough. I yeah. just had a like mini coughing fit before we take camera on. Well, that's how mine started. Sorry to tell you, sore throat for a week and cough, and, and, and then a cold, stinking cold. That will keep you waffle to end, remember. Okay. And waffle to the end. Yes, <laughs> right. Finished objects. So, Nikki's going, Nikki's going first. <laughs> Gosh. So, <coughs> I've been crocheting some hats. This is my practice one. Super chunky. I just used what I had in the house. It's crocheted. So you... I'll turn it around. You do... What's that? Like a... You do the rib... Which gives a mock knit stitch look. I would say because I thought it was knitted. And um, you do a big long tube of it, uh, <coughs> piece of fabric in it, doing that stitch to wrap around your head. And then you join it. And then you do the top, which looks more like crochet than it does knitting. Yeah. <coughs> oh, great. <laughs> Excuse her. Thanks. <laughs> oh. It's the, hang on, I bet it's them lilies. Oh, and the light. I'm such a delicate flower. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, and then you um, you just do some rounds of, like, double crochets or trebles, depending on where you're from. Um, and, uh, yeah, you just do that. So I did that, that was my practice one, and me and my friend Jess has claimed it. But she really likes it. I don't think much of this one. I quite like that. Because it was to model it. Because it's patchy. Look up here completely. Yeah. That's inside out, isn't it? No, it's the right way. Not real, these. Yeah, did you say I've not sewn it up? Just put that to the back. I told her she could have it once um, I've done the podcast. She's been waiting patiently. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> of the big, thick I'm, brim. I'm suddenly deaf. It's soundproof. It's a pattern I followed from. Um, I think I need a hat like that to cover my ears. I suffer really bad with earache in the cold wind. Happy berry crochet. And some of my hats, are, because they're just a single knit. Mm. Uh... That took me four hours to do. 
When I weren't feeling well one morning, I just sat and just did this. I bought a bottle of wool on holiday to do one with. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's so easy to do. Um, yeah, it took me. This took me four hours to do. I was sat watching Dexter, um, and I just did this after I dropped Michael off at school. Um, and then when we went to Yarndale, was it Yarndale? Yes. Um, I bought a black colour to do one in. This looks, this is a bit taller than this one. This is a mixture of merino and acrylic. This is from Signet and this is some undyed stuff that I bought from a show last year. And this is 100% merino from Moonka Cho. They were selling yeah, 200, was, yeah. 200 gram balls. Because um, it's in sub super bulky, super chunky, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and it wasn't uh, twisted, was it, or anything? No. It was like roving, wasn't it? So, I'm going to try that one. That one's lighter than the other one. Yay, noddy! <laughs> I did it like that in case I have, I ever have my hair, um, hair up in a ponytail yeah. or a bun. It looks good. <laughs> looks good, see? Yeah. When we were in the um, when we were at the show, I was holding them up to my head yeah. <laughs> to see what colour would look better. It looks more turquoisey than it looks there. And mum picked that one. Yeah, because it matched uh, whatever you were wearing at the time as well. Oh, my hair, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's faded a bit now, hasn't it? It's yeah. not quite as purple as it was, or cherry, or whatever it is. Whatever, but it's uh, it's, no, it looks more turquoise there. We basically, because it's in the morning, it's quite. Incredibly dull. It's only just getting got light. We've got um a daylight my new, my daylight lamp behind us, which so it might make things look a little bit washed out, but I can't get away from that. I'm afraid because it's dark in both rooms, no sun at all. Doing it at this time in the morning. Yeah. So is that all you're finished? It's not, is it? So that's the, the, I got that pattern from Happy Berry Crochet off her YouTube. She does a whole tutorial on how to do it. Well, if you remember, we'll put it in the down box, or you'll put that one in the down box. <laughs> I'll show my hat. I've done the hat as well. I've been using Coop Knits Toasty Volume 1. I've got both the hat books. Um, and I've done this one. It's on the back. Ace Cube. This one here. Um, I think I showed... It's called Ace Cube Hat. I think I showed the shawl I did last time, didn't I? I think mm -hmm. in this... In this uh, purpley blue. Yeah, you showed this part knitted. I'd start it. Oh, it looks better there than it looks in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to use the rest of that because I really like the colour and it's all I've got of it. I had probably had more, probably had about 60 or 70 grams left after the shawl. So I toned it in with my um, Morello Cherry colourway. So this is dyed, these are, this is both dyed by me. I toned it in with the Morello Cherry because I have a coat that's nearly that colour. So I thought this will match the shawl and this will match the coat. So the, the Fair Isle doesn't stand out quite as, you know, it's not as quite as contrasting as maybe you might do. Mm -hmm. um, but I like it. Um, the, ooh, sorry. The colours both tone in and it's a slouchy hat. Would you like to model this one? I've got no way. I'm not bald. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't normally go for a slouchy. But I quite like this. It's nice. And I've done it in the biggest size. I measured my head and it came up as the biggest size. And I thought, that can't be right. I'm not a large size hat. Not generally. You are, aren't you? But I'm not generally. But anyway, I did the bigger size so it wouldn't so it wouldn't be tight and completely give me hat hair. And I can't do the fancy nice fringe thing like Nikki can where it's all hanging down here because mine's so thin. No, that only comes out for pictures and then it gets stuck to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but this is really nice. I wore it while we were away for two weeks. We went away for two weeks, not last week, two weeks before. And we went to Wales. And when we were walking on, um, ang we were at Anglesey. I think it's Anglesey. I don't know. Somewhere. Don't hold me to that. But we were walking on this really nice <laughs> beach down to this lighthouse. And it was... Uh, God, it was so windy. I did it all with my hat. Anyway, I put this on and it kept my head warm, mm. but the wind was whistling through <laughs> the rib, and all I could think was, I need a big, thick, double rimmed <coughs> hat. So, after seeing Nikki's, I went and 
I bought one. There was a couple of knitting shops down there, so I bought. That's nice. I bought a bowl of this to do Nicola's hat. I'm hoping it'll be enough. How much is it? Hundred grams. I thought there might be more than that. I didn't. Obviously, I didn't look very well. I just thought, oh, that's nice. I'll pick that up. Well, your head isn't as massive as mine, so you'll probably use. I probably wouldn't do it as tall as that one. Mm. But I'm sure I've got some more somewhere if I wanted to tie it in, or do a beanie. But anyway, there you go. So I, that's, I, I so that's have, my I have a substantial ball left after that. But I wore this all the time when I was away. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. And even when it was warmer, I didn't get too hot. This is in, uh, I think this is in merino nylon, and the the Morello cherry was in Polworth. It's real pretty. Uh, and that's quite soft as well because I have a few yarns in Polworth. Uh, Four ply, single uh, finger in weight, and uh, I quite like it. It's supposed to be like blue face Lester. It's nice, but it's quite soft. Not quite as soft as merino, but you wouldn't know when they're together. It's supposed to be quite hard wearing. So, uh, that's my hat. Right, uh, next one I've done. I've done qu I've done quite a bit of sewing. Um, as if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen it's become my new obsession i uh i'm finding that sewing sewing bags and doing everything i quite like the idea of getting into making proper handbags and stuff it's fitting into my lifestyle easier than my dyeing wool i'm still going to keep dyeing wool but it won't be as much as before yeah. because it's it's getting harder and harder uh to fit it in um and through the winter our house is um Oh, it's not cold or damp, but it's it's hard to find space to dry. Yeah, I haven't to dry wool. I have a heated area. We don't use a tumble dryer for the clothes anymore. We put them on the heated area. So trying to find the space to to dry wool if I was doing it quite regularly like I was before. So I'm still going to do it. I'm thinking maybe going forward I'll do a bag and dye wool to match it, or you'll do a bag and I'll dye wool to match it, and things like that, like I've seen others do. Yeah. Um, and I'll really. still do others as well, but it just won't be frequently. Yeah. Um, because Especially I've, through the winter months. I'm finding, because I find it hard on my back and on my wrists. I've been having a lot of trouble with my wrists and my shoulder. Um, but I've, I've got all, loads of dye and I've got loads of stuff, so I'm still going to do it. Um, but I'm not going to try and push it like I, as much as I was before. I decided I was trying to push towards doing that because mm. I would like to eventually move, maybe move away a bit from the other job, do less at the other job and do this more, which is what we would like. Yep. But I don't think, trying to do that more, I don't think physically I'm going to be able to do it just with the yarn. And so I'm finding it easier uh, to fit the sewing because when I come home in my break, I can do a bit. I can't do that with... Yeah, with wool and I can do a bit before I come to work and and in the evenings well if he's wanting to watch his boxing and stuff on the tv I can come in, in here and do a bit to do a bit then so you'll see more stuff in the shop so from me going forward I started doing it because Nikki had didn't have much time, time to do it and she still doesn't really no. so uh, but I kind of found me that's hated sewing forever never wanted to sew <laughs> oh, it's a whole new world now isn't it Anyway, this is a bag I made with Finicky. I made myself one of these in a Toy Story fabric. I can't remember. Am I, I think I showed it. Didn't I not talk about how rubbish the pattern was? There's a little one there. You um, talked to me about how rubbish the pattern was. So I thought I'll have another go. Um, I saw this lovely glittery, look at this, rainbow unicorn, grown up unicorns. We were just talking about this fabric. Um, so it's really glittery. And this is a baby Toy Story one. This is when I was trying to make it smaller. I need to do a bit of... I got it wrong. I got my measurements wrong. I needed to make the lid bigger. But she's got a, she's got one in this fabric, in this bag. In that bag. This fits inside. I put this inside my bag. This goes inside here quite well. Mm. Um, but as you can see on that one, I didn't make... I just needed to make the lid a couple of inches deeper. I thought I'd done my sides at an inch and I hadn't had done them at an inch and a half, so so it sits flat. But it is usable and it's cool. Fabric. Very nerdy. I really like the Toy Story. What's not so like? when I saw that fabric I just had to have it. But this is this is the bag. I bought an original bag as a kit. Um and then I've just gone from there. 
so it's got a turn lock on the front twist lock you put a pink line in and inside there's I've learned it didn't in the kit didn't tell you how to do a zip well I've since learned how to put zips zip pockets in so that works I've put, I think it's got unicorn lining in has it Oh, yes, it has. It's got unicorn lining in there. And then I've put um, there's a pocket here. I told you how to do that, but that's in a that's in a glittery. It's cord. padded that as well. Yeah, it's a glittery coordinating fabric. That's padded. I don't know whether I'd make it. I like it padded. Do you like it padded? Yeah, I can put. <laughs> that's that's. So it's quite a deep. That's Nikki's purse she made. She made herself. That's pretty cool. I don't know if she's shown that before, but I don't know. Yeah, so there we are. I've made these lining. Yourself. Two pockets. I'm thinking the next one. I'm gonna. I'm learning how to put a a panel in the top with a zip down the centre. That's called a setting zip. A setting zip to do uh, to make it a bit more secure. Yeah. But Nikki says she uses it to death like this. I've got the. I use mine. I'm not stopping all the time. This is a I mean, it, I mean, it's just done in cotton, in quilting cotton, but. Uh, and I made the strap on this one, whereas on the other one, I used um, like nylon, like webbing strap, like you put on a backpack. But this one, but I didn't, I didn't have any other colour, so I thought I'll make the strap for this one. So that looks quite cool and it matches all in quite nice, doesn't it? That's nice. So, uh, so I want to make a smaller one. I was trying to, that's what I was trying to do. I want to learn to make a smaller one, which would be good for kids or if you just want someone to put your person, yeah. your phone in. So I've made sure on the next one that my pocket will be big enough to put uh, a big mobile phone in sideways. But uh, I quite enjoyed making them. And uh, I've used this foam line, that one. I've also <laughs> seen somebody, uh, something I was watching, saying about Scotch Guarding, buying Scotch Guard spray. Does that make it waterproof? I don't think it makes it waterproof, but it makes it repel water a bit. And it makes it, you know, it's like what you spray on your settee. You can have put on your Scotch Guard treatment on your settee. So when it starts, because it's all it's done is rain. Because uh, you can spray. It says you can spray handbags with it, and uh, mine's been drenched a couple of times, but it's dried fine. But if you Scotch Guard, it prevents stains and things as well. Although that shouldn't be a big problem. You should be able to, with it being quilting cotton, just chuck it, chuck it in the washer, maybe inside a pillowcase or something. Uh, the 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 foam lining says it's washable. Uh, so you should be able to just wash it, but Scotch Garden it would help. If you if you spill something, it should bead bead off. Bead it. off. Um, That's good so point. I'm going to look into getting some of that for if I make them to sell. I think this is a uh, I've made loads of sewn things. I'm going to drop a little video in, so I'll look a bit different of the stuff I made for the kids. I made a pumpkin placemat for Michael, and I made them two Ooh. little. Sorry, I made two little gift bags each and some little dinosaur hangy things for for joseph i do have another ethel but it's at home that's probably why i forgot about it uh michael wanted some spook, spooky pumpkins um decoration so i did some i crocheted some pumpkin pump, pumpkin pumpkin um but it's up so that's probably why i forgot about send it. me some close-up photos some close -up of it pictures and i'll drop them in i'll yeah. probably do this tomorrow night rather than tonight uh, so I made some placemats. Uh, we have a couple of oak uh, nester tables. We have an oak nester tables, and we've got them between me and Nick, mm. and it, not this Nick, my Nick, husband Nick. Dad. And the amount of stuff he put, crap he puts on it: <laughs> creams, lotions, potions, beer, coffee, everything. You name it, he dumped it on it. And I thought I need something to protect them, protect them. So mm. I made some. Uh, placemats from the top. I'll drop a I'll put a picture in, and then with the leftovers, I just I just so I basically just sewed a load of them together and then cut cut out what I needed from the fabric. So I had some left. This is Moda a Moda jelly roll. I can't remember the name. That's pretty. Um, because I can't find the label, but it's it's the Moda fabric jelly rolls. And I thought so. All I've done is sewn the two inch strips together, quilted them just with straight lines. What are these? Straight lines. Um, did you do that with your walking foot? I did that with my walking foot, yeah. I've done most of my sewing with my walking foot these days. Purely because it's a faff, taking it on the oh. putting it on the, Well, not a faff, because you have to unscrew it. Mm. Um, I mean, it was like yesterday, I was trying to put zips on with it still on, which worked if you 
if you're not too close to your zip but when it's trying to go over the it's when you're trying to sew here and it bumps against the it's slightly going over it sort of kinks out a bit right. and i ended up unpicking so i did take it off and i unpicked put it back on i thought oh, don't want that because i'm using the contrast color thread if i'd have used to match it one it probably wouldn't Is that a not on this one not on this one this one's got a fancy stitch that's pretty I put a fancy stitch i like to do that where i can can you see this has got a fancy stitch as opposed to straight edge when you stop it top stitching mm. um might see it better on the inner side it just looks nice there's no pockets or anything in this one i made all this i thought brilliant did really well everything lined up matched up got my ribbon in my zip look good everything looked good and then 10 minutes later it was sat on my table i was doing something else and i looked up and went oh god for beep's sake <laughs> should i say Ribbon, perfect. Ribbon, wrong way round. <laughs> so I, was I didn't even notice. Even I was, told me, I I was making it notice. to sell. I was making it to sell on the website, and I thought, well, that's another bag for me. Uh, yeah, because it's the ribbons back to front. But there's no way I was going to be bothered unpicking the lining and turning it back inside out and unpicking that. And so, no, so it's just not worth not worth the time and the effort. Um, if, so it's a nice bag, so <laughs> I'll keep it in a little match my table match. Yeah, well, you'll all be matching match. I will. Not like I haven't got enough bags already. <laughs> <coughs> um, and then this, these ones I finished last night. I've done two of these. These are going in the shop. Whereas that one's lined with wadding. This one's interface, so it's a bit more crinkly. Uh, Christmas ones. So I've put a hand sewed these on. I sewed the uh, machine stitched the the lace on, I got that while I was on holiday, with this in mind. That's pretty. Um, it's lovely Scandinavian style um, fabric, which I really like. Uh, like I say, I've got, I've got a huge box of buttons from when I was at the shop and just from mixed up bags I've bought from time to time. I thought I've got to start using them up. So the little lace ribbon pulls on the end. And these are quite nice buttons. So I've made, only made two of those. This is quite a large bag. Mm -hmm. So you get at least a a child's ju a sweater project, jumper project, or a shawl. You can it's get a, a shawl. Size. Yeah, you can get a few skeins in that, no doubt. So hang on, I'll just open it. I have put pockets in. If you can see, put, oh, wrong side. Mm -hmm. I have put pockets in down there. There's three pockets in there, I think. A bigger one, a medium one, and a little narrow one for a pen, or, well, or a crochet hook, or something like that. It's only narrow because I've kind of I'm trying to reinforce the top of the pockets like they do in the Kipling bags. I've been looking at how many Kipling bags are made, <laughs> and they never rip, never break. And yeah. in all the tops of the pockets, they don't just stitch them up and down. They go off like at two angles, like that at the top. I imagine it stops it tearing. Yeah, because so, it's a it's a it's a stress point, isn't it? Yeah, there. Right. I've been doing this at the top of my pockets to reinforce them. Um, so it does make the pocket ever so slightly narrower, uh, but it's I think it was it's less likely to rip in the future. So I'm doing that. That's good. So that's them. That's my finished. I think that's all my finished. Oh, and there's that big tote bag there behind me. Can you see? <coughs> Giant tote bag there. That's pretty. Bad. That was a kit I bought at a fair, but I'm going to be making some of those. I've cut some out in this this fabric, and I'm going to make some big ones of those and and put them online. I'm just waiting for my lining fabric to arrive. I also yesterday made uh, the boys a pair of pyjamas each, well pyjama bottoms. Uh, we went to our uh, always knitting and sewing and I picked up some, um, was it digger and tractors? Digger, yeah. Diggers, uh, it was yellow background with black diggers and tractors for Joseph and Michael got some astronaut ones. Um, I don't have them with me because they're currently wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, put some. I think they've got pictures. But I'm, I can I, put them in. I did take a pattern with me um, to get the materials. To get the materials, but there's the what they wanted. They didn't have in the shop, so I thought I'll just make my own. So I watched a quick video on how to make your own patterns. Um, you know, using one that they've already worn. So I got my baking paper out and I ended up making some. Just a pattern. It's it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Mm. Uh, this was the bit that took the longest. Was you have to draw around them and then add uh, 
seam allowance on. My calls are I won't be using this one again. Why? Because the trouser, I, 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 I didn't take into account that the pyjama bottoms I used were stretchy ones. And because they're narrow, yeah, like the narrow legged, like they fit in, but they're not going to fit in for long. Mm. Uh, yeah, I suppose the ones you trade for stretchy, so they fit in longer. Yeah, because mm. you can get his foot down them. Uh, so it, it's fine. It, Just it, for wearing. It didn't cost me that much to make them, and I can always unpick them and use the fabric for something else, or turn them into shorts. It's yeah. it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they really like them, and if you look on my Instagram, uh, there's smiley pictures of them wearing them. Well, the elephant daughter on Instagram. And then, um, so I did that. And, uh, and then we went to this class. I don't know if you class this as, as a finished object, but what else? Yes, yeah. we went to uh, So Confident in Chorley. And we did a... A doodle, machine doodle class. Machine doodle class, yeah, and it was really good fun. And this was one of my practice pieces. So Michael said I should do space rockets, so uh, there's my rocket. And these are supposed to be planets. Um, that's our surname. As you can, that's you can see better for the planet. It's alright. It will be. Turn it around. It will be uh, the right way around when it when it it goes out. Even though it looks back to front, the words when you're showing it there, yeah. it flips it. All right. So yeah, that's the name. I was showing it more for the oh, right. the planet. Yeah, because you can see it better. Yeah. Um, so that was my practice piece, which I really like. And then my final piece, I did like this. I really, I thought I'd enjoy doing this type of stuff, <coughs> work, but I enjoy doing the writing. So I need to like sew the the back in and then hang it up. Yeah, I've got these are mine that I did. That was look if you, you can see that one. That was the first one I did. I doodled a flower uh, and just did the outline, and then I doodled one and did the filled it in with the fabric. That that one there, I've, I've quilted that. I've turned it into a little puppet, and then. That's the one I did to fit in the thing. I weren't so thrilled with that one. Well, yeah, I really like that. But it's there. It needs a button for an eye or something in the bird. I know. But I have done stuff since that. Oh, I have another finished object. That's just reminded me. Okay. Go on, go on. And um, so since that class, I was able to finish my free motion machine, machine quilt, a quilt that I, I've been doing for ages. And I totally forgot I even had it. Um, it's not a proper quilt. It's mm. a cut. Qu- it's a top piece of fabric top with uh, but big designs on it, um, quilted onto some fleece. I think it's fleece. Um, and the lady who taught me how to quilt, that's what she did with me, and that's how she says she does it. It's quick. Is that Fiona? Yeah, Fiona. And um, I'd already started doing it, and then for some reason forgot how to do it, everything to do with it. So then I finished that off. So now that just needs some binding. So that'll probably be in the next. Ten years. That'll be probably in the next episode because I want it for Joseph for Christmas. Because Michael's, um, I've found, I can't remember if I said it in the last episode, but I'll say anyway. I found a bed sheet from a charity shop that was Spider-Man um, that I could cut down the middle and it's going to be big enough for the back of his quilt. So now I just need to get some um, 505 spray. Yeah. Some spray adhesive because it's, it is a double size quilt. You're not, not going to pin baste it? I'm going to do both. Because right. um, when I was watching a video of how to do it for beginners, they use the spray for at least the base layer, and then you put your middle bit on top, and then <clears throat> you spray again to put your top on, and then you secure it all in <coughs> the pins. And all the glue washes out when you wash it. <clears throat> so that that's what I need to do next. Um, Just finding the time, isn't it? So, <coughs> excuse me. And then I'm going to, I've been doing this. So it's in on my Instagram. I shared this in my stories last night and I've had, I'm surprised I've been getting messages about it. It's lovely, isn't it? Um, I bought this kit from the Knit and Stitch show. Uh, Four or five years ago, isn't it? It is a while ago. And it's a lady in Kenya has done, has hand embroidered these panels. And uh, the, the fabric uh, is batik and these are hand dyed and screen printed. I really remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you cut them into strips and then you add them on, and I really like it. It's really pretty, and that's what that looks like. And you get more than you actually need. Like you get, uh, they're all ten inch or there about panels. Um, and there's loads of scraps left over. You keep one for the binding, 
so I, I want to get some variegated thread for the quilting because I don't want to just put black or white or whatever. I think it deserves yeah variegated yeah. Um, so I've been looking for some nice gutterman ones. So that that's gonna be that, and it says on the pattern to uh, put the scraps on the back, but it's a wall hanging, and I think that's just such a waste. So I'm gonna give them to me to make something. With. We're gonna put calico or something on the back of that. Aren't we? Yeah, we're gonna do calico, and then the hanging sleeve it says to put on. I'm just gonna do that in calico as well, because it's only gonna be against the wall. It seems like a waste. Yeah. So I think if I was gonna do, I've got some Christmas uh, <coughs> panels to do to put up. Um, I think that's all I'm going to back them in because they're only going to be on the wall. Yeah, just it just it something cheap and cheerful. Feels such a waste to have all that pretty fabric facing a wall. No. Yeah. So it even says that in the in the instructions because if you can't face to use it as the backing, <laughs> keep it for something else. And um, I I bought that off. Uh... Oops. All right. It's time to wake up. Um, yeah, so I bought them off one of the stalls from that show and I felt like I was uh, being disrespectful to the lady that had hand sewn those panels. To not do it. To not do it. Because <laughs> I didn't realise they were hand by some lady in Kenya. So I thought, oh no. So I thought I'm a bit more confident now. So I'll do it. So there we go. It's <laughs> good. We're going to that show again next month. No, 1st of December, I think. 1st of December. It's yeah. on the 28th, 29th, 30th of November and 1st. Uh, of December, so Sunday the first. So we're going to go and visit that. We haven't been for a few years, and as I remember, there was loads of knitting and there was loads of sewing as well. So should cover all bases. And when we're at the same stall, I uh, told you I bought these buttons. Uh, the ceramic buttons, the handmade and fully washable ones. I put them on some booties for Michael once. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and I've I'm going to put these on a. Uh, cardigan that I'm knitting for Joseph so uh, he'll love that I might as well just start with the work in progresses I don't know if I showed this but here we are showing it I'm doing this pattern I'm not doing this one anymore um because I just prefer Joseph and Cardis mm. so I'm going to do this cardigan but I like it because it's got the cable still down the sleeve um I'm doing him age two to three the biggest size. Yeah, because I've just done him one, and uh, one to two, and it's not going to fit him for long. Yeah, age two. The one I showed in the little clip video. Age two to three. He's got a nineteen-inch chest, so apparently, according to this, I should do the six to twelve months one. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm doing. No, but you don't want the finished size nineteen. Though, do you? It says to fit chest sizes approximately. Yeah. He is nine. He's got a nineteen-inch chest, mm. so I should be doing the six to twelve month one. <laughs> Not a cat in house. He's not small, is he? No. So I'm doing the two to three one, which is to fit twenty four inch chest. Which I can already see that when I finish this, it'll probably fit Michael. You wonder where they get some of these measurements from? Around, but not with what well, not not length. Not length. So this is the back piece. Um. So it's I can't fit it in the screen, but there we go. So this. Oh, see. So this bit is. The colour bit is lentil soup. I think I got it from the Knitting Goddess, I think. It's a DK. And this one is from the pen shop. <laughs> <laughs> so you better make sure you hand wash it so they don't sh the wool doesn't shrink. Yeah. So um I because I like like the colours. Uh, that's another reason why I did the bigger size. Uh so I'm on to the front cardigan now. And I'm using my knit pros. I don't think I'm gonna have enough of the uh, the pound shop stuff but i have seen online some other colors because i've been in since i've got another little scrappy ball because i didn't check to make sure i had enough sorry didn't mean to poke you i'm using knit pros knit pros things and symphonies for the rib and another show you back and this is a bag i made which is using as a practice um I made this when we went to So Confidential uh, Open Day. This fabric so came confident. in. So confident. Yeah, came in the bag. Like, yeah, in the little gift bag. This is a practice one, and it's it's so full of mistakes, like, I don't care. <laughs> but it's nice. <laughs> I did it, and um, I wanted to see What's in it? how I could do um, with a panel, a full-length panel. Now I know why people don't do it, so <laughs> it's why I've not made another one since, but 
So that's nice. I, I get compliments every time I get it out. Yeah. Well, nobody's looking at mistakes or <laughs> or the things that are, are, are not great on it. They just comment on what they see. So like, not that bit. Just, just not this bit. Just let that get caught in your zip. Yeah, all the time. It's going to get to the point where I'm going to cut the zip out. Um, so that's that one. Uh, with, with those super cute buttons. Because <laughs> I was actually concerned that I wouldn't be able to put them on, but it says they're fully washable. Yeah. Giving employment to women in South Africa. Maybe hand wash. That's what it says. Mm. Yeah, but they're super cute. They're going to go in. I thought they all matched his Put that in there. Protect them. Matt? So while we were talking about the machine doodling from the machine doodling class, when I came home, not when I came home, but you know, a few days later, oh, I, I love it. There we go, and I made, I did my own Robbie, um, because I keep seeing all these applique things that people have done, which I liked, and I like the freestyle look of the of the machine doodling as opposed to I like the look of the when you proper applique it and you fold the edges in and do all that, but I like the the freestyle look scrappy look it takes me a bit back to my card making days and you'd print you'd have stamps that printed images that were quite yeah. hand drawn looking and and coloured in and uh, we'd layer we'd, we'd do that kind of thing decoupage with papers and things and layer them up well the designs of the way i've been doing these bags some of my bags is I'm there doing this and i'm thinking i feel like i'm doing my card making in so anyway so i made this for myself because I love robins, I like anything with robins. And this was from an actual photograph that my husband took. Because everywhere we go walking, visiting, the robins come to visit. And we both love the robins. So I like putting, I've been putting lace on things a lot. That's pretty. Um, which I quite like. The back I've just done, I say plain, but that's just a, a robin fabric. Uh, I've lined, I've interfaced and uh, put wadding in this one as well. Because I'm thinking for the future, I've got a couple I'm planning at the moment. I'm just trying to get some gold hardware. I'm going to put a wrist strap on as well, a removable wrist strap, so that it can be used like a, a bag, a going out bag. Uh, I'm not going to put the robin or anything on it. I'm just doing the actual bag because it's quite a sturdy bag. As I've been learning new things, so now this one, I've put a, an internal zip in that one. And in the ones I'm, I'm making in the gold and black, I'm putting... Uh, a phone pocket yes uh a bit big enough for like my phone i'm filming now i've got a new phone um what is it an s a galaxy a samsung it's galaxy nice. note 10 Flat plus this thing the latest thing they offered me a really good deal <laughs> sorry upgraded <laughs> um and we we like the good video for doing the, the videos and the photo photography is brilliant for me it's better on this one than the s9 that i had for the wall getting the colors right in the photographs and things so that's that so i'm loving that so watch this space so to speak the instagram feed and what have you for or if you don't if you follow our shop it's worth following our Etsy shop and then you'll get notifications when we put Ooh, put new things in but i've got this lovely black and gold fabric um that's like it's a luxury it's a luxury quilting cotton yeah. aimed at christmas but it's not it's not a christmasy print it's got like pine needles yeah i can only say pine needles in like a silvery white underneath and gold print over <clears> the top <throat> and then the coordinating ones they're not snowflakes or anything but they so you could use it any time of the year but they look really it looks yeah. really fancy don't it's it pretty. um so i've got them going on i'm just i'm trying to find some gold hardware because all the hardware when you're looking for hardware is silver they might have some at the show even if you can't, if you can't find it, they might have stuff there. So, sort of sending to Hong Kong. Yeah. I've been shopping around, trying to shop around a bit more. and You'll get it quicker. I can get gold D-rings. I can get the D-rings in gold. But trying to get the lobster, the lobster clasp in gold in the smaller one is, even in the bigger ones, is they're just, if anybody knows of anywhere, I can get these things. Because um, I'm not having much luck short of sending to Hong Kong. Which I'll end up probably having to do, <coughs> but I wanted to get these done before in in the shop. So, and the the, the show's a bit late for that, really. It is, yeah. But you so, never know. But if not, I'll put the, I'll put the silver on them, but it would look better with the gold. With with gold. So that's that's my last. I think that's the last finished object anyway. So I've got look, I've got a few works in progress. We've got time, haven't we? Yeah. Sure, one of mine, and then I think I'll show you what it does. Uh, 
what I've got. When I went on holiday, I thought I'm going to cast on some socks because we, were, we weren't going away for two weeks, but I was off work um, for two weeks. We was only going away for a couple of days and we were going to be day tripping all over the place. And then I got I got ill, uh, which wasn't fun. So we didn't do any day tripping. Just went away to Wales for a couple of days at the end when I was just starting to feel a bit better. So I thought I'd cast on a few socks in my own yarns for samples, you know, so you can see what the stuff looks like. Knit it up. It's ten past nine. Right. Anyway, I'm at work at ten o'clock. <laughs> anyway, this is the first one. This is, uh, I'm knitting. It looks a bit blown out in the light. This is a deeper colour than it looks there. This is... Uh, We're awfully coordinated for that yarn. We are. <laughs> it is a deeper, orangey. Russety colour. It's beautiful. It's just the lights blowing it out just a little bit. This is Autumn Fire. This is one of my newest ones that's just gone on recently. Autumn Fire. And this is on my Polworth base. Um which feels <laughs> it feels a lot like Blue Face Lester. And it's knitted in uh Mina Phillips knitting expats uh wrist Ferber <laughs> sock pattern from when I was in a sock club. I'm uh, I love this pattern. It's just you only need to read the, the pattern once and you've got it. So that's that one. That's it in the scheme. Try and pull it back, see if we can get a see it's much it's much more russet orange in it than it looks there. That's not gonna get it's it. My face upset it's, today. Try and get a bit of natural daylight in it, the light outside now. That's a bit better, isn't it? Mm. That's a little bit better, but still it's still a bit deeper than it looks looks there. But that's that one. Um, I did three. You started three, so this was, you know, while we were sat in the hotel room at night and, and in the car. This one, I love this one. This is a beautiful morning. That's beautiful. That uh, I've got this it on. Is. This is. I just as soon as I, I dyed this one, it was one of those I dyed and thought, God, do you know, I really like that. This is this one, um, and it's that's it on pattern, so it looks like knit up plain. On the sock, and this is such a pretty colour. This is called a beautiful morning, and this I'm knitting. You feel that this is on British wool. It doesn't say what British nice. wool. It's just British wool mm -hmm. and nylon, but it's quite soft. Yeah. Um. So I thought I'd try that. So that it's something that's definitely British. If you like British, you want to buy British. That's that one. That same sock pattern again. This one. I'm knitting both of these on uh, Magic Loop. That's that one, and then a third one. Is this one? Nikki likes this one. That's cool. This one. That's my heel flap. I'm knitting this on my nine-inch circulars. This one is black currant ice cream, and this is on Polworth. I think this one. This one's on. I think yeah. I think this one's on Polworth. You feel that? That's not rough it's either, is it? Not as so, quite as soft as merino, but it's still it's soft harsh. nonetheless. It's not scratchy. It's not harsh. This is on on the Polworth base. I think I slipped a stitch there. Can you see? Doesn't stand out much, does it? <laughs> so this is how this one's it's like a skinny it's up like a skinny stripe. And that's this one. And I've got this colour in this You this... never would have known that did that. No, but you've got this colour in this style. I've also got one called horse chestnut, which is like conkers yeah. colours. And then there's uh one called peach melbourne ice cream, I think. Peach ice cream or peach melbourne ice cream, which is a orangey peachy colours, but they're all dyed the same way as this one, so it's all should come out. Should come out like that, a bit like that. If you're knitting socks, which is like I say, it's come out stripy, which is quite nice. So that's three, uh, three of my sock yarns on That's that one, schemed up. That's brilliant. To give you an idea of what me of what they look like, it's this one. I love this one. I love the autumn colours because I'm an autumn colour person. But I just love how this has come out. I'm so pleased with this one. And I, I say I've got that on two bases. That one. <laughs> <coughs> Keep all them and my buzz light your bag. This is my first quilted bag. It's a cool bag. I love this. It's all squishy and there's no interfacing in this one. It's all just squishy. Uh, what's in the bottom of there? Oh no, it's just my needle holders and things. So that's that one. Can I do with yours? I think I've only got one more knitting project with me to show. And it's tangled up in my sodding Well, I've got three, so I shall just show mine. Yeah. Excuse me while I just detangle my back from the chair. Uh, well, I'll say it's knitting, it's not as crochet. Um, I decided one day that I needed to use up some of my um, stash, you know, your odds and ends. 
and I didn't want to do like a crochet blanket, I didn't want to do the like cosy memories or scrappy socks or anything, decided to do a rug instead. So here we are. I'm holding five strands together using a seven mil hook. Okay. <coughs> and I'm just pulling my stitches out here. Oh, it's all good. Um, and I tolerate because it's hurting my arm now because it's getting heavy. But as you can see, it's lovely. I'm going for a gradient. I need to do one of these. A gradient. Put down the side of my bed. Once I've finished what's in my bag, which is what I've got on the needle at the moment. This is all your acrylic yarns, isn't it? It's a mix of acrylics and wools and mm. just odds and ends. There's It varies from DK weight up to Aaron. Are you thinking about the colours the way you do it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've been grouping the colours together, so at least it's not a complete mishmash. Um, so it's fading into like more more greens. Because I've got a whole my my bag's just full of you know, like I've got yeah. a lot of style craft stuff and not I don't even know what I'm doing, I just can't really see it. But um once I've finished that bit, then I'm gonna finish it because it's starting to hurt my arm now. Because it's getting quite heavy. But it's good. I'm, I enjoy doing it because it's growing fast. Um, you can always do it in panels and then sew it together. Nah. So it's not as heavy. Because where I'm going to put it, it doesn't need to be too big. Hmm. Um, so I've been doing that. And then... Oh, I've got, I'll show you my other crochet. Um, lady at um, She wants to do a shawl. So... There goes my hook. So I decided that if mum's always just magical base, was going to be a pair of socks. Is this that? So this as well up here, if you can see it. Mm. Was going to be a pair of socks too, right? Mm -hmm. Ripped it out. Weren't happy with how my socks were going. And now I've started a shawl. They're pretty. Um, I kind of looked at a lot of shawl patterns, didn't like how they were coming up. I do a made up, so I just like merge like two together. And here we are. You can't really tell, but this is called the linen stitch, which is the same on the rug I'm doing. And this is a herring fishbone stitch. It's a bit lacy, you can see more through it. So, I'm doing that in four ply, and I have cast. Is it still cast on when it's crochet? Don't know. Cast on. Not a crochet, yeah. In um, Aaron, and I'm doing another one in Aaron, which is like twice the size because it's obviously a bigger wool. But I didn't bring that with me because I'm just doing it as a sample more than to wear it. I think I've gone wrong because it's increasing in the middle, but the uh, the outwards, the wing bits aren't getting any bigger. So you're not increasing the, on them, yeah, but they're just not getting any bigger. You're doing it every row, increasing on them every row, yeah. So I think I'm going to have to pull it out start again. Luckily it's on stuff that, you know, my odds and ends balls, so I'm not really fussed. Um, so that's that. And then I've been trying to finish this, but I'm just getting irritated with um, the silver stuff. The silver stuff. I know what I did with mine. I, I've shown this previously. I've, I've done this one. With the tw it looks nice with the twinkle. But I think after I've finished this panel and the twinkle isn't coming back <laughs> because it's really getting on my nerves. Because I keep missing it. This is what I'm doing. Yeah, I get kept doing that. You'd have to go back a few stitches to... Yeah. Because you don't realise you've missed it. Because I think once I cut, remove it from the knitting process, because that's what it is. It's really nice. But it is... You miss it and you go back and you realise you've got loops and you've got to rip it out and it's just taking me... For what should be a quick knit... I bought the yarn to do another one of these and I bought it without the sparkle. Yeah. I didn't want the sparkle, but it'd be a really quick, it's an easy TV project without the sparkly stuff. Yeah, I can easily do this at work and it's in the big value chunky. We got it in one of those boxes that we had. Knit in a box. Yeah. When we did that. That's all changed now. So I've done that. And then... Different people as well. Got it? And then I've got one more. When we went to the show, we went, we both found these. Uh, Called fading sweater <clears throat> kit. Fading circles sweater. Yeah, it looked really nice, didn't it? She, the lady was wearing it. Um, 
I think this has got a picture of it. That's what it looks like. So we, so I've, I cast it on almost immediately. But they were less than twenty pound or something, weren't they? It was still got mine here. Sixteen pound fifty for the kit. Still got mine here. Look, comes with all the. Here we are, that's how it came. Sixteen pound fifty. Eighteen pound fifty. To knit a jumper in my size. I mean, I mean, I'm a 44, 45. So I was pretty impressed with that. Really. So I've cast it on. Um, it's a top down construction, so you start at the collar and you work your way down. And I've just done the beginning bit, and I'm at the stage now where you do the first um, to get those stripes. It's like you can see in the picture, it's short row shaping to get the effect. Um, and I'm about to start that, so I've got it to that point. I've got that put it away now, when I can concentrate on it a bit more. Yeah, because we it's like me. I didn't. I wanted to start mine straight away, but also I had all these different things on the go. I thought I need to get. I need to get me two uh, boxes finished first. Well, I, I'm doing that, and I want to finish. I want to do Joseph, finish Joseph's cardigan. That way, I can concentrate on this because I would like to wear it for main stage, but I don't think it'll happen. Uh, did I have anything else? Well, while you're looking, I've got a shawl on the go at the moment. Just what the rest of what I bought from this shawl. <coughs> I've been busy. <laughs> I'm knitting. Uh, I was in the Curious Handmade um, the Shawl Club, the Shawl Society, four, I think it is. Anyway, by Helen Stewart. And this is. I think, this was, I think this, this was the third one and it's knitted in double knitting awesome, and there's three colours there. She had a dark grey, light grey and then this was a darker grey, I think, three shades of grey. Um, but I'm doing mine, I've got the dark grey and the light grey and I'm doing like a sage green. I've dyed my own yarns for this. So this is where I am. I've just joined in the final colour. Right. So I've done the dark grey and then the, doesn't really stand out as yet. You can just see the light grey stripes. It's not supposed to look stripy really, it's just sort of to blend in. Um, the dark grey is foggy day grey. The lighter grey, which will be the lighter grey, will be all in with the... It's, it's blended in there and then it's going to be in with the, uh, the, the sagey green. That's called Misty Morning. Um, and then I'm just going on to I can't even remember what I've called that. Do you know? I don't can I don't remember my own colourways <laughs> names anyway. Forest green, it might be forest green or I don't know. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Have a look on the on the Etsy shop. It's one near the top. I can't remember what I called it. But this is this is where I am so far. So this is basically your, your stocking stitching and increasing. This is a bit of a slip stitch pattern, which I think is gonna go up into the green, but it'll it'll look more like a pattern in the green. I got the just joined the green in just before before we film this. So these were the three colours I'm using. Foggy day Frosty grey. foliage. Frosty foliage. Yeah. That's it, because it's got a grey undertone. I, I dyed them. I had the dark grey already, this foggy day grey in the shop. This one, I dyed the grey and called it Misty Morning, I think. And then this one was dyed the same as this, but then I put the green over the top, so you can still see some of the grey coming through, which I thought gave it a frosty look. That's actually why I called it that. So that's the three colours. I've got two of them in the scheme. These, this is the lighter one and the darker one, the misty morning and the uh, frosty foliage one. So you can see the grey in the green as well. Uh, I'm saying them as the darker one. So the the three work together because it's a three colour shawl. I thought okay. worked quite well, and grey pretty much go, green goes with everything, doesn't it? So they're in the shop. Um, they're all on for sale separately. Yeah. But if you wanted to buy the three as a set, if you messaged me in Etsy, I could do you a listing and I'd do them a bit cheaper. Yeah. If you wanted them. I didn't want to put them as sets because people don't necessarily like them buying them as sets. But if you don't want to buy them as a set, you just want one. But if you did want all three, you could message me and I, I think they're £18 each. 30, so that would be £54. If you bought them as a set, I'd maybe do it at £50. Yeah. Plus postage. So there we go. That's one of my stitch markers from Coco UK. I love that stitch markers. I've just ordered some more. I know, I got an email. 
the Halloween, the Halloween cupcakes. <laughs> yeah. And then them Christmas ones she showed last night. I went, why didn't she put them? <laughs> like when I ordered them yesterday, so I messaged her mm. and asked her if she could, if she hadn't sent it because she had them on. And there's an elephant one there. I think Nikki gave me that. I don't know where that was from. Might have been from her as well. Let me have a look. It was a little elephant one Nikki gave me. Yeah, that was from Coco UK. Yeah, a little elephant one that's the wrong way around. But her stitch markers, I think, are second to none. Mm -hmm. And I'm knitting that on my uh, Knit Pro Symphony uh, circulars. So it's all a bit squashed up at the moment, but if I spread it out, it's going to look so nice. It's going to feel so nice. It's going to be amazing. So I, I might have that done by... Because most of my knitting has been time has been taken up with that. So even though I've done all this sewing, I'm still squeezing the knitting in. Yeah. Not about to give it up any time soon. You squeeze it in. So I've much. got so much stash to use. I've been, I've separated the shop stuff and my stuff. One's in one room, one's in the other. And I'm looking at all mine thinking, Christ, I need to get some of this knitted. Do something with it. And I've, I've kept them in, this is one of my bags I've kept for myself. I love this fabric. Um, I've done some things a bit long. I'll do a quick lacy pocket in that one. Again, I was making, this is me on my learning curve practicing. I made pockets, a lacy pocket for that one. But when I was doing the stitching again, you can see it on this one, I went, I slipped and went over onto that mm. and I was top stitching. Now, a lot of people probably wouldn't care about that because you don't really see it on the outside, but I did. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So, that's, I'm sorry. I like it. I like it. I'll use it. I'm, lear it's a, I'm, I'm learning as I'm going along to be a bit more careful. So, that's mine. I like that one. So, I've got more of that fabric. I have a couple of others in that one as well. I need to get something done with them. As you can see, I'm building up a bit of a stash. It's not going to get any bigger than that. I said I won't put in any more than I can fit there because I've got enough stash of everything else in the house. So, that's me. Um, and then I got a few other bits from the show. Ben requested some more socks, so find this in one of the sale baskets. Um, this is nice and bright. Joanna wood paint hand dyed yarns called the Hulk colourway. Um, Ben's favourite socks, he said, were those ones that I knitted him from the sock blank. He likes them that they match, but they're odd. His words, not mine. Because it's true. They're from the same sock blank, but they're odd. There's the rainbow. Um, so I'm going to start them at some point in the future. I don't know when. Uh, and then this was the first thing I bought. It just, just spoke to me. I forgot about these. I don't know where it comes. Mm. Uh, we went on this lady's stall um, called Lucy Locket Land. Alexa. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's her details. And um, she had these socks on. She had. <clears throat> oh, jeez. Chucking everything everywhere. She had these socks on display. And look at the pattern. It's like little squirrels with acorns. And then um, leaves and what have you. And I've not done anything like this sock wise before. Um, and she had a kit to do pattern. That's very cute, isn't it? So, it's it's presented so nice. Yeah. And it's the label with all the the yarns and they're all pretty, pretty, pretty. So it's Lucy Lockett Land, a little, li lucky little acorn sock set in collaboration with Stone Knits. So Stone Knits did the pattern and they did the yarn. So I'm looking forward to starting that. And when I was there at the stall, she gave me a free uh, stitch marker. Not that you can see that. It is. Little acorn. It's super cute. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I probably won't start these this year because I've just got so much mm. to finish. I got um, went on Pearl and Jane as I normally do when I go there, and I got this cuckoo cashmere four ply under her own brand name. It's eighty percent merino, twenty percent cashmere, and it's super soft. Now I bought this in mind with doing hubby. A hat, maybe dyeing it and doing hubby a hat, but you know, I don't know that he's gonna get it. No, I don't think he's gonna get it. Um, it's because I wouldn't do it in, in cream because she only had it in the natural colour in the cream. I don't know whether I'd do him cream, it'd soon start looking rubbish. Mag yeah, well, we, he's an eczema sufferer with all the eczema creams and scalp lotions and all the things that he uses, it would soon start looking rubbish. But the one I knitted him last year in like the silk blend stuff, 
um, that was all fair isle and what have you, he lo he's lost that. He doesn't know what's happened to that, and he, which he's gutted about. So I said I'd knit him another book. Maybe I'll find something else. I've got loads of lovely soft yarns. And I'll knit something for myself. I fancy doing gloves or... Yeah. Or maybe a nice cowl. On displays that. you have this like a um, tight top tight mm. style vest and it was so soft. Yeah. She's uh, she's so got nothing else. <laughs> gloves and sock patterns and uh, all sorts in this. So that's Pearl and Jane. You've heard me mention her many a time if you watch us regularly. Uh, she's in Skipton. Uh, her shop's called Pearl and Jane. And then I got these. I wasn't going to buy anything else. I didn't buy much because I'd been looking at how much stash I got. We just go for the inspiration more than anything and to pick up the odd thing. I bought that jumper kit that Nikki's bought. And then I got these from Tall, Tall Yarns. Because they are so soft and just love the colours. Nikki put the colours together. I was looking at a different colour set. Um, but I just love these. I think these are definitely a shawl combo or a cowl combo because they are mega soft. It's 50% yak. 50% silk. Now, I have dyed a couple of things on this base myself. It's so pretty. But it is so huggable. So, I don't know what they're going to be yet, but it'll be something definitely round one's neck. Yes. <laughs> to hug up to. So, that's all I bought. And a few, I bought some buttons, but I'm not muting them out now. So, that's about it. Yeah, Same. so we've been busy. So, Considering we never have any time, we've got lots well, done. Well, I, spend, I do squeeze everything I can into the time. Yeah, I do. I've got. Um, so, I think we're going to have to call it a day because it is 9.30 and I have to be at work at 10 o'clock. Yep. So, so until next time. <laughs> Later, dude. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>